Welcome friends here to First Baptist Church on Saturday the 25th of April. We're delighted you're joining us once again as we plow our way through the book of Proverbs. Today we're in the 25th chapter. I suspect you've heard the phrase, revenge is a dish best served cold. The idea is that you've taken your time, you've premeditated your way of exacting vengeance on the one who's crossed you in some way or other. It's uh, attributed as a phrase to a 19th century French diplomat. And in some ways it echoes the famous story of the Count of Monte Cristo, a well-known French novel about young Edmond Dante, who is falsely imprisoned on his very wedding day and spends years in the Chateau d'If and then eventually escapes and plots his revenge against those who'd so falsely accused him and ruined his life. Vengeance. And when it comes to vengeance, we can read the 25th chapter of the book of Proverbs and think, isn't that what this is about as well? For in verses 21 and 22, we read this. If your enemy's hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. And in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. In other words, the picture at first sight seems to be, hey, you've done something for this guy that then burns him up and he's, he's just turned inside out and he's had his comeuppance. He's now just with burning coal, terrible punishment. Unless, of course, we think that this is just a, an Old Testament way of getting even, getting vengeance, then it's interesting to discover that the Apostle Paul quotes this very verse in Romans chapter 12, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. In other words, you'll bring punishment. But of course, it probably doesn't mean vengeance at all. It means that acts of kindness may produce in your enemy a change of heart. And the burning coals here may be as reflecting a practice that when the person was truly penitent for what they'd done, they went around with a bowl on their heads of burning coals saying, I am really sorry. Their hearts have been broken by the kindness and not the vengeance of the person that they had so damaged. In fact, in the context of Romans 12, it says this, don't repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. It's really echoing our Lord's teaching, isn't it, about not going for personal retaliation, but turning the other cheek, the kind of person who doesn't flare up and seeks vengeance immediately. I guess you found this, I certainly have, that forgiveness is the easiest thing in the world till you have to exercise it. But when we don't exercise forgiveness, then we can find our hearts eaten up week on week, year on year, with bitterness. And when that happens, you can be very sure that we've driven from our hearts the sweet dove of peace, the Holy Spirit of God. Are you waiting for someone to get their comeuppance? Be very, very careful. Rather pray with him who had all the right in the world not to pray it for what they did to him to join our Lord himself who prayed, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We do well to remember that today.